Hello, welcome to this first video tutorial for Salamander. My name is Paul Jeffries, I work for our Advanced Geometry Unit, and today I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the plugin um, and show you how you can use it to uh, load up a GSA file and have a look at the data within Rhino. So, once you've installed the plugin, which can be done um, in the usual way, either by dragging the RHP file into a Rhino window or through the Rhino options form, um, to load it up you just need to type in salamander at the command prompt um, and its main control window will appear. Um, so what salamander does effectively is provides a bolt-on interface for Rhino that turns Rhino into an editor for structural analysis models. Um, so this is the main um, screen of it. Um, you can see here we have um, a design uh, tree which will show you various different parts of the um, active model that you're looking at. Um, at the top we have buttons for uh, various file operations and options and things like that. Um, down the side we have various tool buttons which I'm not going to be talking about today but hopefully I'll cover in a future tutorial. And down the bottom um, we have various different options for viewing data. Um, we also have this little help button um, so if you get stuck um, and there's something that I haven't covered in this tutorial you can go and look in the help documentation. Um, so, uh, what I need to do now is load up a GSA file, um, and it just so happens that I have one that I prepared earlier, a simple stick model. So, if I go back into Salamander and I click on Load Import in the top toolbar, and then I select GSA, if I find that file, I can load it up. Now, it needs GSA to be open to do this, but if it isn't already open, then it will it will boot it up for you. just might take a couple of extra seconds while it does that. Um, so you can see up here, it's telling you everything that it's importing. Um, and now if we zoom out, we can see um, the model that it's imported. Um, I'll talk about uh, the actual 3D part of it in a minute. But the first way of viewing the data is with this data tree that I mentioned already. Um, just like in GSA, it's a tree which holds all the information that you can view and edit. So if we look um, at elements, um, and then you can see this table will come up um, showing all the elements in the current design. And if we select some of those, um, a little pop-up data window will appear, which shows um, the data in a bit more detail and will let you edit it. Um, and that's the same for all of these. Um, and the other way that you can access this data is through this graphical view. You can see that Salamander has imported that GSA file with lines representing the elements and points representing the nodes. Um, these are kind of handles that you can use to select and edit those objects. Um, and it has put them into its own little work area, um, salamander, and then split into various different uh, sub-layers. Um, you can see here that the elements have all been put onto layers named after their section properties. Um, and what you can do with these layers is they just like ordinary um, ordinary Rhino layers, you can rename them, you can turn them on and off, you can lock them, um, change the colour uh, if you want to distinguish between different um, types of elements. Um, and if you did want to rearrange um, the layers that those are on. Well, you could either do it manually, you can just drag the objects onto any layer that you like, or this button here will allow you to sort them onto different layers by different types. So you could sort them by element type if you want. You could split nodes into restrained and unrestrained, things like that. Um, so back to uh, the handles, um, which is what I call the Rhino objects that are created by Salamander. Um, if we select one of those, uh, let's have a look at that node you'll see that just like in the data tree view uh, we get a little pop-up which shows all of the data um, that's on that particular object and allows us to edit it. Um, if you did want to turn those pop-ups off if they're getting in the way this button down here in the corner toggle pop-up data allows you to turn that off and then you can just select things like normal and it won't bother you with it. Alternatively if you did want them to come up but you still found they were getting in the way this little pin button down here if you uncheck that then as soon as you navigate away from that screen it will just roll up the form 
to the title bar so you can continue to edit it and that won't get in the way too much until you click on that again and it will unroll. Um, so the next thing to note is that although these look like ordinary rhino objects, so long as salamander is around, um, they are constrained to a certain structural logic. So for example, the elements are dependent on these nodes. So if we click on that element and we try to just move it away, then we won't be able to. We'll need to do it by moving the nodes. And there are tools here um, to split those nodes away and um, separate elements in that way. Now, I'm not going to go through them today, but they do exist. Um, and also, this editing method is linked into the uh, Rhino undo functionality, so if we undo that, then that point will return to its original position. Um, it's important when you do that that you only undo one step at a time, however, otherwise Salamander can sometimes lag behind and cause you some problems. I'm fi working on fixing that. Um, so there we go, we can see that model there, but maybe we want to um, see some data graphically on that. Um, so this button here, toggle display options, allows you to view various different things um, through graphical means. So let's turn on element sections. And you'll see that now um, what it's doing is rendering uh, 3D images of the section profiles that we have assigned to those elements. Um, and there are various other things that we can do. Uh, we can look at the ID numbers of things. Um, and in the options screen, we can choose which ID we want to look at. So either salamander ones or GSA ones or so on and so forth. For most intents and purposes, they should be the same, but sometimes they're not. Um, you can see the restraint conditions, um, so on and so forth, element IDs, element orientation, things like that. So that's essentially the basics of how you view data in Salamander. Um, now if I, had mod if I had modified this at all and I wanted to save it but without um, having to export it to GSA, what I could do is I could save it as a design link XML file. The whole of Salamander is built around design link. Um, so it should get on well with any other programs which are also designed around design link and also this XML file can be um, used in other programs for example if you have the design link plugin for Bentley Structural you could import the XML file there um, so let's save that um, as example and you can see there it has written that out so that's the basics of the program um, if we finish with the program, we want it to shut down or at least go to sleep for a while so that it won't bother us anymore and we can continue to um, edit the rest of the Rhino file without it getting in the way. If we click on the sleep button, we can click on go to sleep. The salamander will just tidy up after itself and, uh, and disappear. And if we wanted to get it back, we could just type in salamander again and everything comes back as it was. So, thank you very much for listening. I've been Paul Jeffries and uh, I hope to be able to provide a few more of these things in future so that people can start getting to grips with using the program. Thank you very much.